Hi, my name is Britt and I'm a registered dietitian and today we are talking about turkey. My big favorite thing is ease. I'm a very lazy cook, if you don't know anything about me. I don't like to spend a lot of time and I don't think the fussier you get, the better your food tastes just the opposite. The less you do tends to actually end up with a better product. So I have a 13 pound turkey here. There's only four of us in our family. I want leftovers. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of getting sick of cooking all the time. Have a nice dinner, celebrate the holiday, then end up with a bunch of things that you can really quickly put together to make other meals with. I took this turkey out of the package. I did not rinse it but I did pat it dry. I threw away the giblets. I'm not a giblets person. I have had many different types of turkey and some people use giblets and some people don't. My mother used to say it made a more flavorful gravy. I honestly don't see it. I don't taste it. I don't really notice it. And it just sort of skeeves me out. I just pitch it. The water type of brine where you shove the whole thing in a thing of water that's heavily seasoned, I don't find it that valuable. I like to do a dry brine. I think it tastes just as good and it's a lot less work. I am preheating my oven to 425 degrees. Unsalted butter. And into it, a tablespoon. Probably two tablespoons actually of salt. Also, quite a bit of pepper. About a teaspoon and a half a time. It's room temperature so it makes it easy to stir. But if you don't, like just melt it in the microwave for like 30 seconds. But I'm just trying to make a highly flavored paste. So it's just salt, pepper, and thyme. That's all I do to this. What else do I need to get ready? I need to chop the celery. Six ribs of celery, a whole onion. This stuff goes on the inside. I'm gonna quarter that, and then an apple. Good. But you're gonna shove the cavity with a bunch of things. I also do not stuff the cavity of a turkey with dressing. That's another episode entirely. Mm, even if your family does do this and it's been tradition, I really wouldn't recommend you continue with this one because this is a real high risk of foodborne illness. This is one of the things that you really can get sick with. So I would be very, very, very careful if you are stuffing your turkey with actual dressing that you serve on the side. Next, clean hands. Take these wings, shove them underneath. That's as much as I do. I don't like tie the whole thing up. I just kind of just pop the wings so they don't burn. The next thing I'm gonna do is kind of get my hands in between the skin and the meat. Like just kind of go in there, kind of pull it away. Oh, time to get this thing out. I don't know why they still do that. I do not understand it. Once all that is kind of open, take a little bit of this and massage it on the inside. And this is actually dry brining. You're getting the flavor to the meat. It's really difficult to penetrate the skin. So it doesn't really kind of matter what you put on the outside of the skin. All that matters is what you got on the inside of it. Get into the legs too. Put a little bit of butter there. This is dark meat, so they, it tends to tolerate it. And then I'm gonna start shoving in alternating pieces of apple and onion. And then once you got the apple and the onion in, start slamming in the celery wherever it'll fit. Some people put lemon. I don't mind lemon. I like lemon with chicken, but I don't do it with turkey. I don't know why. It's one of my weir weird rules. Ideally, you can let this sit uncovered in the fridge for up to 12 hours, and it just kind of will make a beautiful skin and really deeply flavor the turkey, whatever works for you. It's kind of nice to sometimes do, especially if you're prepping it the night before, if you're cooking it early in the morning. Honestly, I'm cooking this now, so it's gonna go right in the oven and it's gonna be delicious that way too. I had it this way, but I am turning it upside down before I put it into the oven. This is a very important part, is to turn it upside down. So all the fat on a turkey is is on the, this part of it, the bottom. One last thing I wanna do, I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of salt on top. And, oh, my mother always taught me to put a glass of milk on the bottom. These things are lifesavers. They also keep your oven cleaner, just in case. Oh my goodness, it's heavy. Put it on that. Stick it in a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes 
And that's just going to kind of like render all the fat that's on the backbone and the wings and the thighs of the turkey. And it's just going to go down and drip down to the chicken breast, which is the really dry part of the meat. So we're just going to kind of crisp it up a little bit make it taste good you don't get that gorgeous like beautiful top of the bird that's all like high and perfect and stuff but your meat tastes better so we're going to start like that for 20 minutes then i'm going to come back and i'm going to turn the temperature down to 325 and i'm going to keep it that way for an hour and a half we're going to take it out of the oven i'm going to flip the bird over cross your fingers that i do just fine with it today sometimes it's been touch and go so I'm gonna take it out. I gotta flip it over. Whew, can't even see. My glasses are all steamed up. Oh yeah, baby. This thing is gorge. Check that out. You have to take it all the way out of the oven first in order to flip it. I have not opened this oven. I haven't basted it. I haven't done anything else. All I did was have it upside down. I have a couple different methods here. I have this and I got a good set of tongs. Let me see. You can tell I'm struggling. I'm nervous with this. Okay. It is like the dangerous part of the... Come on, let go. I don't want it to fall apart. Oh my God. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. You know what? Own it, guys. Just do what you gotta do. I think I'm about to lose the leg. It's all right though. Shove it back together. It's gonna be carved anyway. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. All that matters is it tastes good. Really, seriously. It's at like 150. I really wanted to get to 160. So most of it has been cooked upside down. We're gonna just finish it off. It's only gonna take probably another 20, 30 minutes and then it'll be done. The bottom side was pretty. The rest, you know, eh, it'll be fine. Let's just finish it. There's all this gorgeous gravy at the bottom too, which I can't wait to show you. Rule number one when you're cooking, don't apologize. Boy, this turkey smells amazing. It is definitely done. We had a little mishap when the thing turned over, but other than that, this thing is gorgeous. Actually, I'm gonna flip this way. See the back side of the turkey. Ta-da! Make sure it is 160 and not really much more than that. Nailed it. Looks great gonna taste even better. That's all I really care about. When I go to carve this thing, nobody's gonna know. Well, maybe all of you, but nobody else. Let it rest. See you in a few minutes. Bye. I have a carving cutting board. I have a cutting board fetish, actually. Wait. Oh, look, it's half carved. Yes, sweet. The less work I have to do, the better. What a hot mess. <laughs> Let's just cover this back up so you're not fixated on that. <laughs> Over here is gorgeousness. This is flavor, 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 flavor. I don't really do a lot to this except strain it. I do add some wine. There is a bit of fat though. So I'm gonna skim that off. I don't have a special fat ladle that I use. I don't think it really helps all that much. I mean, it probably does if you need to get it all out, but you want a little. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and I'm gonna put it over here on the stove. A really big flat spoon and a bowl. It works better than all the fancy gadgets, I think. Otherwise you lose too much of the broth and I'm kind of like a hog about that. So this is worth it and get this going to a roaring boil. A cup of wine, I'm gonna add to it and let that cook a little bit. It was just white wine. We're gonna make a little bit of a roux. We're gonna thicken the gravy up a little bit. Holy cow, it's awesome. Doesn't need anything. About a quarter cup of flour and I'm gonna add some water to it. About a half a cup of water. 
And I'm just kind of, this is a salad dressing shaker, makes a bunch of different things, but I love to use it for stuff like this. You don't end up with giant lumps in your gravy, which is, oh, hate it when that happens. Start spinning ahead of time, and then you're just gonna pour it in. Keep stirring until you get to the desired thickness that you want. You know, it's a turkey gravy. It's not supposed to be super, super dark brown. Usually turkey gravy is a little lighter in color. You know, there's this stuff called Gravy Master, which is awesome. Keep it on hand. I have some, I'm just not using it. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that cook a little bit more. That's done, that's great. Typical Thanksgiving platter, there's just four people. I don't think we need something this big, do you? I'm gonna use a plate. There's like a tendon, there you go. And then on the other side, there is like a tendon that you gotta kinda get in between the two joints. There it is, boom. There's the other one. I do have a dark meat lover in my family, so. The wings I don't really serve. They make super awesome stock though, cause it's, see, look at all this gorgeous golden color. I'm just gonna put those to the side. And actually they just come right off. This turkey is so tender. It's just like falling off. Here's how you do this. I find like the breastbone, the top part of it, and you wanna go just to the right or the left of it. It holds its temp for a long time. It's why you don't want to cook it to 165 in the oven. It will keep cooking once it comes out of the oven. I have this whole other side for turkey sandwiches, turkey pot pie, turkey soup, turkey salad, turkey divan. We eat a lot of turkey in our house. I actually get rid of the skin. I didn't design it to be like gorgeous, delicious skin. You may be better at carving than I am. Ah, so I'm gonna save the other half of that. Live to fight another day. It's beautiful, no harm, no foul, nobody knows that it fell apart when I was flipping it over. See, I nailed this, so I don't need gravy to serve it, but I just thought I would do that for you because it is perfectly moist and delicious. Have a great holiday and see you soon, bye-bye. Nailed it!